The global wellness economy is valued at $5.6 trillion. 70% of people will carry an obesogenic gene. Exercise does not cause weight loss. It's everywhere. Tell yourself it's there if I want it. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today, the Noongar Wadandi Mort. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Scratch the surface and everyone has a story. Welcome, Kaya, to the Wisdom of Women. Today we are talking about body size and we're delving into the truth and fiction around what is a healthy diet. It can be a very confusing space and so we need to know what is good and what is bad. Mm. Now, the global wellness economy is valued at $5.6 trillion, which is massive. Amazing. But the question that we're going to ask today is, is it all a con? Mm-hmm. Now, welcome, dietitian Lana Brandley. Thank you very much. It's fantastic to be here. Uh, I, I didn't know that it was $5.6 trillion. That's yeah, a lot of money. I know. And I didn't realise either until I started Googling it. And I just thought this is astronomical um, and very pertinent today because, of course, as a dietitian, I know you're so full aware of the impact of food, of basic nutrition mm. on our body. Are we losing the way a bit with what we're doing here? I think... Um Well, firstly, people have never been more aware of health. I think once upon a time, not long ago, we didn't really think too much about health. We just lived our lives. So in the last sort of 50 years or so, I think there's been a massive explosion in, um, you know, health and awareness around health. There's also been a lot of controversy, a lot of confusion. So I think people do lose their way because they don't know which way to go. Mm. Um, I personally think we overthink it a lot. Um... What hasn't helped is the fact that we have so much avenue for information and, of course, we have the whole 360-degree gamut of information, just depends on who you ask. Um, We have a lot of avenue for people who probably shouldn't be having an opinion about it or aren't really that well researched on the subject Um, and they are now able to um, find their voice, so to speak, so there, like I said, the whole 360 degree gamut of information and people will mm. watch uh, one YouTube, one Instagram, one television program and they get completely confused. Um, but it, you, go on. No, I was just going to say it is. It's absolutely bamboozling mm. to me mm. um, that you can have such a vast different number of people and, as you say, not necessarily credible as well um, coming in with all this information yeah. about how – you know, and, and just to run off a few, I mean, you've got fasting, um, you have got uh, Mediterranean, which is probably a little bit more pathway. But but you re- can you reel off to us yeah. some of the stuff that you've I mean, come across with oh. it all? Um, so there's, you know, is coconut oil good for us or not? Margarine versus butter? Um, do I um, restrict carbohydrates? Is saturated fat good for me or not? Um mm. What are the other ones? You know, butter versus margarine. We've food got combining. Food combining is another one. Um, the blood group diet, love that one. Um, and then you've got, you know, do I calorie restrict or don't I or is it all carbohydrates fault or is it all fats fault? Um, do I move uh, to lose weight? That's a big one that they've made inroads in on and that shocks a lot of people to know that exercise does not cause weight loss. They still look at me and think that I'm telling them porkies when I tell my clients that. Um, So wherever um, increasing our knowledge, and of course that makes it sound like nutrition science doesn't have a stand. It makes it sound like we don't, nutritional scientists don't actually know what healthy is. Um, And so we end up with all of these offshoots of, oh, we should do this, we should do that. Um, and, you know, people, I'll never forget my um, a lecturer at Curtin University when I went through uni over 23, four years ago now. She said, Lana, people will hold nutrition information really close to their heart and don't upset that because they will get really offended. And it's very, very true. Like you only need to listen um, in at a party or at a dinner party or just a get-together of any sort and someone will... will believe a nutrition or what they believe is a nutrition fact um, and 
don't try and pry that knowledge away from them because they do. They get extremely um, upset. So I've learnt very early, just just run with it. <laughs> um, we could say, oh, perhaps you could do this or that. Um, but, yeah, people do. I don't know what it is about nutrition. There's something about it that everyone has a, a, an opinion about it. Um, and I think it's just because everyone eats. Um, they do eat and yeah. sometimes they don't necessarily eat what is good for us. Let's just talk about the basics. What is nutrition in the sense of what does the food do to our body? Yep. So um, basically you can break food up into calories and nutrition. So calories are the energy that our bodies need to survive. Um, and everyone knows that if you don't get enough calories, it results in malnutrition and death eventually. Um, so those calories are broken up into carbohydrates, proteins, fats and alcohol. Um, and the total number of those calories from those energy forms is the amount of calories that you consume in a day. Then, of course, in the foods we have uh, what we call vitamins and minerals. And the reason that vitamins and minerals were grouped together as vitamins and minerals because they are essential nutrients, meaning if we don't get enough of them over an extended period of time, we develop a disease. So that disease, everyone knows iron deficiency anemia. Mm -hmm. um, people are, are more and more uh, being diagnosed with vitamin D deficiency now. Um, but, you know, you can get a deficiency of any nutrient um, in our society in Bunbury, Western Australia, we will see generally the um, vitamins and mineral deficiencies of the iron and the vitamin D, et cetera. Uh, but in other countries, you'll get things like iodine uh, deficiencies um, and, you know, potassium deficiencies and protein deficiencies as well, uh, which is not a vitamin um, or a mineral, but, you know, it's just wherever you're living around the globe, if you're not getting um, a supply of the correct food and a wide variety of balanced food, then you quite easily can develop a deficiency. One other nutrient that we haven't mentioned, which is really, really important, is fibre. Fibre is the indigestible part of a plant. Um, and at the current um, um, science shows that 80% of Australian adults are not getting enough fibre. Oh, that's a big number. Yeah. Why, why is that? Is it because they're not eating as many vegetables or? It's not just the vegetables. I uh, think at, in general we know that an uh, overwhelmingly large majority of Australian adults are getting up to 60% of their calories from what we call ultra-processed food. Right. Um, and ultra-processed food does not have fibre in it. Oh. Um, and we also... Probably, if I had to guess, it would be it's a result of the low carb movement. You know, people believe that if I have cut down on my carbohydrates, carbohydrates are fattening, I'll lose weight. Um, and carbohydrates are the very foods that fibre is found in. So you're right. looking at whole grains. Grains are extremely high in fibre. Um, then you've got legumes, which are also high in carbohydrate, but also mm. high in fibre. You've got your fruit, which people are scared of eating fruit now. They say it's got too much sugar in it. Um, that one annoys me no end. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, then, of course, you've got your vegetables. Um, but vegetables, you know, they do have fibre in them, mm. but they're probably one of the lowest just right. simply because they're predominantly water. Yeah. Um, so we know that there's um, a lot of nutrition in vegetables. Yep. Um, but fibre, definitely, but not as high as what you might think. So there's more fibre in fruit. Fruit and whole grains and legumes. Mm. And then, of course, your nuts and seeds. Yep. Uh, any plant product that's not been refined. Mm. But unfortunately, what are we doing? Refined. We being, you know, manufacturing companies, yeah. uh, food manufacturing companies are refining everything. If you take the wheat grain, for example, my father was a wheat farmer. He would cut the head off the wheat. Um, and he, if you hold that wheat grain in your hand, it can be broken up into three parts. The first part is the wheat bran layer around the outside. So what food manufacturing companies can do is take that and remove that from the grain and they'll put that in a separate packet and call that wheat bran. Um, then I joke all the constipated people have to go back and put that back <laughs> on their food. Um, and then inside that grain is an oily uh, part and that's called wheat germ. Uh, yeah, so people don't even know what wheat germ, germ is. They're like, no. what is that? Uh, it looks good. I've got a packet and I've sprinkled it on my cereal, but they don't actually know that that was actually part of right. the uh, whole grain. Um, and then if they squeeze that, 
they can get wheat germ oil and they charge, you know, extra money for all of these things. And then we eat what's left over, which is the endosperm, which is the white product. So that's the white bread and everything made with that white bread. And I've just used the wheat grain as an example, um, but we do that with a lot of the grains. Wow. So anything moving away from what you would call your whole plant or your whole whole plant, yeah, based yep. product yep. is processed enough, processed yep. that you are yep. not going to get your full nutritional value. Absolutely, yeah. And that's really done to create separate products for... And also what's happened is uh, in a very short space of time, we've got really used to soft, fluffy food. Yeah. You know, we're hook, line and sinker on it really. Mm. You add fat, you add salt, you add sugar and you take away the fibre. It's bingo for manufacturing companies and they've known that. Um, but humans want that now we're, mm. because we are addicted to it. There's that interesting um, conversation, isn't there, too, about um, the parts of the brain that respond to some of the food. And yeah. I, I know we've had a conversation about sugar actually hits the same parts in the brain mm. as, it, as uh, a, a drugs yep. in that it provides satisfaction yep. and you're hooked. You want more. Yeah, I think it's uh, the dopamine hit um, for want of other hormones that it, it possibly hits as well. Mm. But like I say, so does a hug also releases dopamine. So yeah. we're constantly seeking that, you know, feel good uh, feeling um, and the pro ultra processed foods really hit that mark. Do we still get the same nutritional value in our food? You know how you talk about um, people might say, you know, paddocks are depleted and, and we're using sprays and, you know, is that having an impact on the nutrition that we're getting out of our whole foods? To be honest, I don't think we really know yet. I don't think the studies are, have been done. Um, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, the farmers are spending a lot of money on adding back in those vitamins and minerals. Uh, in fact, I, I think an overwhelmingly large majority of their expenses is adding back in mm. um, because once we've killed the soil, which is a living structure, it becomes dirt um, and then we have to add back in the goodness into that dirt so that it can grow um, food. Unfortunately, I, I, this is something I think about a lot. Um, do I buy organic when I can? Am I obsessed about it? No, I'm not. Um, I just think you're better off to eat the fruit and the vegetables and the whole grains. Yeah. Yep, there's chemicals on it at the moment. Maybe somewhere in the future we'll find a better way. Um, there's some really intelligent people out there, far smarter than me, that hopefully are, are finding a way to improve the farming practices. Um, but at the moment, no. But as it still stands then, I suppose really the message always should be bypass the, the fast food outlet, uh, go and get yourself some good yeah. whole plant-based <laughs> food, bit yeah. of protein, go home and cook it up. Yes, yeah. Um, and when you're looking at different diets, as we spoke about before, you know, we've got keto, we've got paleo, we've got um, you name it, there's um, all, all these different uh, ways of eating, none of them are telling us to go out and eat yeah. burger places and hot chips and cakes and mm. biscuits and lollies and soft drink and drink uh, high sugar drinks such as iced tea and, um, you know, flavoured milks and things like that. So, you know, there might be an argument back and forward about, you know, how much meat are you telling me to eat? How much, um, you know, carbohydrates are you telling me to eat or not eat? But the reality is they're still not telling you to eat that ultra processed food, mm. which is what the overwhelmingly large majority of Australians are eating way too much of. That, that's really simplified that mm. for me. That's mm. a really good, clear um, explanation of yeah. the issue. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Have you yourself as a dietitian tried all the various well, some of the various diets? I do, but not for long. I don't know how people <laughs> diet, to be honest. Yeah. I think, wow. And, you know, people look at me, they go, oh, you don't have an overweight problem. But I say, well, I don't have an overweight problem because, you know, it means something to me to eat good quality food. Not all the time. Um, so and have a good still, relationship with food. Do you still splash out every now and then? All the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It doesn't help that I'm an endurance athlete. So, you know, when it comes to sugar, I'm pouring sugar down my neck all the time because when you're doing a five-hour bike ride, it's the only thing that will fuel your body. Um, but what I tell myself is, okay, while I'm actually running the engine, I will give it the fuel that it needs. 
But after that, I will really try and cut out that excess sugar. And you really have to. You have to eat good food because otherwise you can't expect that of your body and then not give it good fuel. And the and the uh, impact as well on our emotions, on our mental health. So increasingly research is saying, saying that it has a significant impact on just how we wake up and feel. Absolutely. Um, it goes, I think there's many areas that answer that. Um, there's more research coming through now um, as showing the importance of gut health on, you know, your, your mental health and wellbeing. Mm. And people sort of, it, it's very hard to connect the dots Um so it's the same with autoimmune diseases and things. People think, well, how can fibre in my belly and a lack of neurofen and antibiotics and things uh, that affects my gut health affect my brain? It doesn't make any sense. But when you actually get down to the nitty gritty of it and explain it, um, it it's uh, very lucky that there's some very intelligent scientists out there that can follow <laughs> those pathways. But I think it's important to remember that a lot of this science is just beginning um, and what I find in our current way, especially with the fact that, like we were saying before, there's so many avenues of information, um, a science will show something or someone will bring up an idea um, and then I call it horses bolted science. It's too late to shut the gate on it. Um, people believe it and if enough people believe it, it must be right, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is the way we are with these things like, oh, coconut oil is really good for me. Um, is it? Margarine's one chemical reaction away from being, you know, um, plastic. plastic. Um, you know, I always say water is one chemical reaction away from being deadly hydrogen gas. But unless you're a biochemist, <laughs> you're going to let that all, you know, upset you. So, um, you know, that's um, the avenue that people go down. And unfortunately, the truth, the science then comes galloping up behind Mind. about five or six years later or however long. So unfortunately, the truth is slow. The gossip is quick. Yeah. And people jump and they make a lot of money. There's always people making yeah. money somewhere. Yeah. Well, there we go, $5.6 trillion a year right across the board. Yeah. Um, I've always been very intrigued to understand about a calorie. Are all calories the same depending on – is a calorie the same coming from a chocolate bar as it is from a capsicum? No. So I'll just explain firstly, one calorie of cover, oh, so one gram of carbohydrate is four calories, one gram of protein is four calories. So that dispels the myth that carbohydrates are more fattening than protein. Let's just knock that one right on the <laughs> yeah. head. Um, alcohol is a whopping seven grams, so one gra uh, so seven calories. So one gram of pure alcohol is seven calories and one gram of pure fat is a whopping nine calories. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit technical and there's still scientists that will argue this back and forth, it's just, just the grey areas, the nuances as people call it. Um, but I'll just try and simplify it. So we now know that if you eat a calorie in fibre, um, depending on how fibrous that food is and of course what you eat it with, uh, some of those calories, maybe 90, 90, uh, sorry, 5 or percent, five to 10 percent of those calories may not reach your bloodstream. Um, so in other words, if you eat it in um, a calorie in chocolate, uh, because there's no fiber in that chocolate, it is going to all be absorbed through into the bloodstream and go into your body and be recognized as, um, in the case of fat, nine calories. If you eat that fat in um, the form of, say, a, a capsicum or even a cashew nut, there's no fat in capsicum, so we'll go with cashew nuts, yep. <laughs> um, then not all of that uh, fat is going to end up in your bloodstream. A lot of it's going to be encapsulated by the fibre and it's going to go along your really long gastrointestinal tracts, which is about eight metres long, and it's going to end up in the toilet bowl. So in that respect, a calorie is not a calorie. Mm -hmm. um, in, for people who want to lose weight, I do um, believe it's, it is good to calorie count because nutrition is not an exact science. We're not really going to weigh that up. We're just going to give them a certain amount of calories and say, here, run with that. Um, because even the packets on the food are not perfect. Um, these things are not tried and tested and bats mm. chested every time they, you know, go out the door. Um, so nutrition is a lot of estimating. 
Um, so I do use calorie counting, um, but I do mention uh, what I've just spoken about. The thing being is that a healthy diet is normally really high in fibre anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we know the very same thing happens with fibre with cholesterol. Um, so the gallbladder actually secretes a lot of cholesterol into the intestinal tract. It's in the form of bile. Um, in a low fibre diet, um, the uh, cholesterol is reabsorbed back into the body. And so if you have high cholesterol, um, you don't want it to be reabsorbed. Mm -hmm. You want it to stay out into your gut. Um, and if you have a high fibre diet, it will do that. The right. fibre will encapsulate a lot of that um, uh, uh, cholesterol. And again, it will end up in the toilet bowl. Right. I'm really starting to understand the value of fibre. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Is fibre is something that we can, is good to just add additionally to what we're eating on a day by day basis? Absolutely. It's like anything though, you're almost always better off to try and get it from food, like from whole food. Like we said before, if you're eating, like this morning, my breakfast was rolled oats with nuts and seed and dried fruit and I put other fresh berries on. Why do the berries go out of season? Damn. Oh, um, I and got grapes. My frozen and berry bowl here. Yes, yeah, well done. <laughs> yeah, and you can. You can do frozen as well. Um, yeah, so and then whole grain bread, you can choose different rices and pastas now. It's all available to you. Um, mm. I think it's important to remember when you're starting to add fibre into your diet, just maybe do it slowly because it can upset your tummy a little bit. Um, but you do get used to that. You know, fun fact, uh, two kilograms of your body weight is microbiome or what we technically call microbiota. Um, so when you stand on the scales, you're, you're not overweight. You've just got heavy <laughs> bugs. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of bugs. That well, kind of blows yeah. my mind. A few, few bugs extra today. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they keep our guts healthy. And everyone knows what it's like to have um, a really bad bug down there. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's. Have you been to Bali and got Bali belly mm -hmm. or just had a, a gastrointestinal yeah. bug? Um, it's not pleasant. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, we know that it's really important to feed those bugs and the bugs eat fibre and yeah. they produce right. your bowel cells' favourite food. Um, so people may have heard of the term butyrates or short-chain fatty acids, which is uh, the butyrate is, is one form of short-chain fatty acids. These are big words, but basically just think of them as your bowel's favourite food. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we need to look after it. Throw it all in there. Mm. Um, let's talk about standing on the scales and weight. Um, I know that you um, have some really, um, you know, solid ideas about when we talk about healthy body shape and body weight. Um, because in this day and age with all the social media and the platforms, um, we have been in doctrine to understand or believe that healthy fits into a certain size and a certain shape. What's your thoughts about all that? There is a, um, there's a current movement called Health at Every Size. Um, there's a book, if people want to read it, by Linda Bacon. Uh, and she um, debunks a lot of those myths. I think the truth lies somewhere in between, to be honest. Um, the other thing is you have to look at your genetics mm. and you have to look at you as an individual. My point being is that we know that roughly 70, we being science, has shown that 70% of people will carry an obesogenic gene and 30% don't. In the past, we haven't really had the environment to bring out that ob ob obese um, conversation. Uh, well, we're not overweight. We were never obese in past mm. years mm. because we didn't have all the high calorie food that we're having now. Um, my point being is that possibly people have always had the obesogenic gene. They just weren't obese because we didn't have the obesogenic environment yeah, yeah. that we are now living in. Makes sense. What's happening is people are being blamed at an individual level. And I'm sure, um, that, you know, everyone has their own, um, you know, ability to change things. Mm. I'm not discounting that, but we are we're creatures of our environment. Look around us. Mm. Um, we're creatures yeah. of our culture. Um, we follow. That's what we do. Um, and when your whole environment is 
enabling uh, too many calories and poor nutrition food, then it's really, really hard to maintain a healthy body weight. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the health at every size notion takes away that idea that your obesity is wholly and solely or overweight is your fault or even your weight is is your fault. Um, you know, I know I've got friends that are really, really thin and that's just the way they are. You yeah. see their, their siblings are the same. Yeah. Um, it's clear that that is genetic. Mm. Um, so we know that it's really important to have a healthy environment, but that's not actually happening. Um you can never discount the importance of movement as well. So we're focusing wholly and solely on diet, um, but we've all stopped moving as well. Mm. Uh, And we know that uh, movement is not just good for, let's just put body size aside. You could write a list as long as your arm about how good movement is for your body. And Mm. the, the geneticists, the longevity experts they're all pretty much unanimous in how in their agreement in how important moving your body is. Yeah. And that comes back to the health and wellness again uh, and mental health. Um, so we do know that there is a, a link to certain diseases and your weight, but I think it's overemphasised. Um, you know, I will often get people coming into my um, clinic and they've got um, maybe diabetes, maybe a bit of high cholesterol. It's a common, we call it syndrome X. Very simple. Mm-hmm. You just draw an X and you, you put on one end blood pressure, one end high blood sugar levels, one end high cholesterol and the other one um, 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 overweight and mm-hmm. obese. Um, and they'll say, I'll just lose weight. That, that'll fix it all. And I'm like, well, actually, um, if you do the keto diet to do that, it's not really going to help your cholesterol. So people have got this idea, um, and I understand where it comes from, uh, that if you uh, lose weight, it will fix everything, problem solved, uh, when the truth is further from that. Mm. The quality of your diet is probably far more important. Um, Your ability to exercise is far more important. And we're coming through um, with science now showing the importance of sleep. Mm. Good quality sleep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And then I say health is holistic. It's never just one thing. Um, It it could be alcohol and other drugs. If you're drinking too much or, you you know, even drugs being medical drugs, you know, if Mm. you're taking too much Nurofen, it's not good for your kidneys. It's not good for your gastrointestinal system. Mm. Um, You know, so it's never just one thing. It's holistic. But we certainly do have this idea that weight is number one front and centre, mm. um, um, like changing our health and it, it's not necessarily true. And as you say, the, the, the mental aspect, mental health aspect too of um, maybe women understanding the realistic expectations of their body when it comes to DNA inherent shape. I mean, I always laugh that I used to have, I have my father potato farmer's legs. Um, You know, I could go to the gym five days a week and starve myself, but there's an aspect of my body shape that will always remain my body shape. And I think it's really important for women to understand, um, be realistic about what you're doing, take care of your body, be healthy. But by all means as well, they'll understand that that TikToker that you see um, in the gym wear um, with the big booty or, or whatever it might be is not necessarily realistic and might represent, what, 1% of, of um, you know, women's body shapes. Absolutely. And, and also, like, they're young. A lot of them are really, really, really young. So we're all different shapes when we're young. We're different when we're younger and we're doing more activities and whatever. We are, we are different and our bodies do change, don't they? And Particularly if you've... If you've had kids you do have this absolutely yeah that that yeah really i mean some people it goes back but most of us it doesn't ever go back to how it used to be you know and i see comments from 50 year old women on tiktok going yeah yeah you're 20 and of course you're hot come back when you're my age you know it's like i don't think they're they're kind of like talking to us they're really talking to other 20 year olds when they're showing their body so, we, yeah, we've got to remember to compare. You know, not com- Why are we comparing ourselves? And I think because the TikTok, um, I call them shiny happy people, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> they always are. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, you know, 
a shiny happy Bless. people. Yeah. Um, what happens when they press stop? Yeah. Um, and the reality is it does come with a look at me. Yeah. Um, and so I think the reality is that they are not the norm. Mm. Um, mm. I always remember when I was 19, I went to Africa and, you know, those people that are living in the country areas, they they don't have access to the ultra processed food that we have. They are eating off the land, yeah. literally. Um, and the women, are, they're big women, you know, they've got big hips, they've got big boobies, mm. they're, you know, they are walking and moving all the time. They're really fit. Um, but that's just their shape. Mm. It's yeah. just the, the way that they are. Disposition. Absolutely. Yeah. So when yeah. you look at that, um, then, and then you perhaps look at an Asian person, they're a lot more slight than we are. Of course it's genetic. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I just think that um, wear nice clothes, like, you know, feed mm. your body well, do yeah. some exercise. There's so many other ways of feeling good about yourself. Um, but also if you're not feeling good about yourself, know that you can do something yeah. about it as well. Yeah. Anything goes yeah. nowadays. Um, you know, if you want to be big, good, be big and healthy and rock it. Yeah. Um, but if you uh, want to lose some weight because you're not feeling comfortable, good. Yeah. You know, I'm all for people just doing what makes them feel comfortable. Absolutely. Tell us, um, you're into a bit of training at the moment, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Yes. You're yeah. very impressive. Tell us, <laughs> what are you in training for? Um, I qualified for the World Ironman uh, Triathlon Championships last year in Boston. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. 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 <laughs> so you good Just thing. the age group. But anyway, uh, I won't be in the professional section, that's for sure. But it's good. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's, in, it's in Nice in France. Oh, my goodness. In Ooh. September. <gasps> Tell us, how do you prepare for something like this? Follow training peaks. Cool. It's <laughs> a, yeah, you just download the, it's an app and you, um, Start out with your basic statistics of power on the bike and speed and heart rate and things like that and speed in the pool. Um, and you just build on that over the course of uh, six months or so. Uh, at the moment, I'm just doing the shorter triathlons, so uh, things haven't got really long on the training yet. Um, but, you know, we still do things like three and a half hour bike rides and things. And I ran 19 kilometres on Sunday. Are you on Monday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just uh, it's one of those things where your body learns to handle. It's like anything. It's yeah. no different than someone who's a musician that can, you know, play on stage for three hours under mm -hmm. the lights. And, you know, it's just something that they enjoy and that they get used to. And um, I enjoy uh, running up in the bush in the Ferguson Valley um, nice. with my dog. She loves that. Um yeah, it just really relaxes me. It's my happy spot when I'm when I'm moving. Um, yeah, so it's uh, going to be – it's it's always hard. I think the training's probably harder than the actual day itself. <laughs> the last 20 k's of the run, of course, um, is always going to be hard because um, that's when things get real. But the, the training is, is the thing that sets you up for that. And it's nothing special. It's just every day, just doing it properly. Um, and we were talking earlier with Sydney about, you know, getting out of bed, the one, two, three. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. 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 And, and one of the things that I get my clients saying, you know, to me, oh, is how do I create motivation? Um, I just can't seem to get going. Uh, and I say, don't wait. Yeah. Don't wait for the motivation. Let me tell you, I get up really early in the morning. I'm up at five o'clock most mornings, uh, sometimes earlier uh, if I have to go for a longer bike ride. Um, but I never feel good in the morning. I don't wake up and bounce out of bed and go, whoa, mm -hmm. this is great. Thank you for telling us that. It makes yeah. me feel oh. so much better. In fact, yeah, I really totally. don't feel good in the mornings at all most of the time. But the action creates the motivation. The yeah. action creates the feeling. And once you're actually out there doing it, you're thinking to yourself, ah, okay, I'm glad I'm doing this now. Um, and then afterwards you feel so much better and that creates that um, motivation and that um, mm. it's all, it, it's definitely a bit of routine as well. Yeah. You never underestimate the power of routine. This is what you do at this time and you just do it. And then you start realising that you can do it. Um, mm. But, yeah, people often say to me, how do I get motivated? I say, well, I'm never motivated to go for a swim in the ocean <laughs> with the sharks at, you know, 6 a.m. in the morning along, Man. you know. But it's just something that I've – it's also an integrity as well. If you've told yourself that's what you're going to do, do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you're only letting yourself down, aren't you? Yeah. If you don't. Yeah. And, and, and just to recap on the, the one, two, three that we've prefaced before. Okay, so I don't know if anyone's, anyone's got teenage children <laughs> or maybe even themselves, right? You know how you lie there in bed sometimes and you're just like, oh, my God, I cannot get out of bed. So I, um, I'm i constantly telling Sid when I go into her room, count to five. Count to five and that is it. Then you move your legs or you move your arms and you get yourself out. So allow yourself that short space of time. And I don't I know. F- I find it so annoying. When yeah. You yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, one, d- d- one day I'm going to stop telling them. Yeah. I, d- I, you know, I give up with mine because it's always a nightmare to get up. And he's, when he's motivated, he goes, Mum, come on with a spray bottle or a pan of water or just wake me up. Mm. But. Well, I don't. Mm. You used to we, throw a cold apple on us. I used to take, oh. I used to take cold fruit uh, yeah. or vegetables it's out of the fridge and I used to put it near their face or under You could the, find a spider. Oh, my God. Oh, oh no. I, no. Yeah, <laughs> he'd probably just go, eh. I, I send dogs in. We've, we've done the pots and pans. Yeah. And the, but That's like, impressive. No, That's he'll sleep through anything. Yeah. Um, he can't, he's like me. We're night owls, yeah. so the morning's hard. And, yeah. and I, I was listening to something because there's a program on at the moment about sleep. And I said, I know what I need to do to go to sleep, but mm. I'm not. Mm. But also I heard somewhere, and I'm <laughs> latching onto this, that we need night owls. Uh, like from back in the days when we all lived around campfires and whatever, there were people that were night owls to protect the tribes. I and then thought there's of it like that. people yeah. who get up <laughs> early to go foraging and then the, yeah. you know, whatever. So mm. that's me. I'm... Yeah. I'll stay up and protect you till about midnight. Uh, see, yeah. I think, I yeah, think we're going back to our DNA inherent yeah. scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my mum's the yeah. same. My mum, my sister, my son, me, we all have the same sleep You're patterns. much more fun if you're a night owl. <laughs> you're not yeah. fun I'm in boring. the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> we're not fun in the mornings. <laughs> I'm a night owl. Yeah. 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 That covers yeah. it all, doesn't and it? I think as long as you get your good quality sleep, yeah. which I think is something yeah. that maybe is not happening a lot anymore. Yeah. How many hours of sleep should you get? I think it's not my area of expertise, but I am a nerd and listen to podcasts of people <laughs> who it is their area of expertise. And I think they say somewhere around eight hours, but it's got to be good quality sleep. Yeah. Um, you know, and I know uh, the things I've heard around sleep hygiene, uh, you know, obviously get away from the, is it the blue lights? Yeah. yeah. Um, anything that kind of stimulates you, mm. try and go to bed at the same time. Uh, you know, um, I think there's uh, some people who don't tolerate uh, coffee or they don't metabolise coffee mm-hmm. very well. And yeah, if you're one me. of them, you just can't drink coffee because it is still mm. in your system. Mm. Even if you drank it at uh, 8 a.m. that morning, yeah. if you're a non metabolizer or a slow metabolizer, I should say, um, then it could still be impacting your sleep. Right. Um, I don't think I'm one of them, but I definitely make sure that my last coffee's around 10 o'clock. I have two a day, good, mm. strong coffee. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I do know that if I happen yeah. to leave it later, I'm not sleep. I'm not getting off to sleep very well at all. Interesting. Um, so it? know your body. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's what, you know, we were talking about nutrition today, but know your body. Everyone's different. Um, people are coming up with more and more food intolerances and things now. Um, you know, they don't eat gluten because they, you know, gluten bloats them. Fair enough. Um, and you know your body better than anyone. Mm. So um, what would be your three big tips for someone? About yeah. diet, nutrition, what what would you be your, your three big points? If you can, if it looks like you can grow it on a farm or gather and hunt for it, or it looks like it grows out of the ground, um, it's usually pretty good for you. Um, you know, disclaiming, you know, ten eighty and those sorts of things. But anyway, <laughs> um, but you know what I mean. Um, the other thing is uh, eat. Until you're full but not over full, what's your portion sizes? If you have to tell yourself, if you, you know, if you don't have a good relationship with food, food's everywhere. Mm. Tell yourself it's there if I want it. But do I really need to have this much now or, you know, it's there. I can have it any time I like. It's not going to be a famine anytime soon. Um, and just take that urgency away and really slow down and enjoy your food. I think... One of the things that is happening, I'm sure not all families um, uh, are, are not doing this, but we've taken away uh, from eating at the table. Yeah. And I do see a lot of children who have probably pretty poor eating habits um, because they're not sitting down and eating yeah. at the table. They're just eating whatever time they like or whatever time they feel they need yeah. to. No, um, we, we still we still really do that. You know? yeah. There's only a 
three of us, but we make sure that we sit. Yep. And no phones. Oh, yep. Sometimes there's a phone. Yeah. But turn it over. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. And and we'll either chat or if, if something's on that we really want to watch, we might watch that. But we sit down and we eat. Yep. Yeah. And just portion control. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. I was going to say we usually have dinner ready by six ish, six thirty, mm. but we don't. Always sit at the table. No, it's kind of <laughs> gone by the wayside now. I think when the children were younger and because mm. we were very aware as well, just more of the, the social and connection aspect that sitting around a table brings. Um, and then if we had the older generation, the nannies and the poppies around, that's when all the great stories come out as yeah. well. So yeah. when the kids were younger, um, it was it was a great dynamic for everyone to meet at the dining table and for everyone yeah. to engage and, mm. and connect and it was fun time mm. um i think though when you, your children get older um you know and we've only got one at home now those kind of things have gone by the, the way so i also taught you how to use a knife and fork mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> a lost art yeah ah, table ah, manners yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely yeah but just be mindful of what you're doing what you're eating you can still be i guess watching the tv and sitting on the couch but still be enjoying your food like you being mindful of what you're doing yes yeah. yeah yeah um so many times you see people in the car eating or walking down the street eating and i'm like well that's a waste so it's like <laughs> yeah. it's kind of enjoy that <laughs> enjoy it's like it. mindless yeah. consumption yeah. Isn't yes it? yeah we don't even have to get out of our car to get stuff now um so eating in the car is pretty um yeah, it's pretty, pretty normalized yeah, um that's true yeah so, yeah, so that would be my second point. The third point, really, um, watch your drink calories uh, because people don't realise what's in drinks. Mm-hmm. They don't realise that one, when um, Joe, Shauna uh, and I, we, you will probably remember a time when people drank mostly instant coffee yeah, and they put a little bit of milk in it, maybe yeah. some sugar, yeah. but that's still a low-calorie drink because most of the coffee was water. Yes. But now people are consuming these. They heat the milk up, the flat white, uh, and our portion sizes have gone up. So we've gone mm. from a regular to a large to a, is it grande or tall? Yeah. And all that in there now is milk. Some mm. of it's air because it's been frothed. Mm. Um, milk is what baby cows drink to grow quickly. Um, it's got yeah. a lot of goodness in it. It's got a lot of calories in it. Um, do you have dairy? I do, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but in terms of the drinks, I, I don't really think we need to be drinking calories. Mm. Like as an adult, be mindful of Mm. they're just, they're not always empty calories. Like I said, you know, milk is nutritious. Um, but when you're looking at things like ice, the ice coffees or the chocolate milks, they can have up to, um, you know, 12, 18 teaspoons of sugar in them. Uh, in you know the some of them are like have gone from six hundred. You notice I've gone from six hundred to seven fifty mil yeah. now. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I have. Um, and then um, people, it, it's also a connotation. So people will drink iced tea and think, oh, this is really healthy for me. I'm like, there's no tea in that. It's just <laughs> the name, and it's got you know eight, ten teaspoons of sugar in it. What about artificial um, sweetener? Does that have yeah, any impact question. on the gut? Yeah. Um, it from what they. Uh, science shows it probably does. I think it's probably, from my understanding, is it's probably too early to tell whether that is a negative impact or not. I know they've no... They, science has shown that it does change your gut microbiome, but we just don't know whether that's for the good or the bad. Oh, okay. There might be some other science that shows that it is. But, again, um, you've got to be careful with just making assumptions because, like I was saying before... The horses bolted science, you know, people mm. will say, oh, that stuff's so bad for you. It's yeah. really bad for your gut health. Yeah. I say, well, we'll back. Um, there's some science indicating that, but I think we still need to be open-minded and realise that there's a lot of science that shows that they're perfectly safe as well, mm. some of them. Um, and so, you know, in used correctly in small amounts, which is all that's ever been recommended, yeah. Yeah. Um, that perhaps they're okay to have. Um, I always say to people the dose is the poison. So we um, necessarily uh, use chlorine in our water because anyone who's drunk filthy water in another country knows what happens if you don't have clean water. Yeah. We're lucky enough to have a system whereby our water is is clean. We have to use chlorine uh, at the moment. Um, but if you drunk a cup of chlorine, you'd be in all kinds of bother. Yeah. Um, you know, same as fluoride, we put fluoride in our toothpaste. There were people who argue very differently to this, but small amounts of fluoride have been shown to be safe. 
Um, but if we drunk, uh, sorry, fluoride, if we drunk fluoride, mm. um, it would make us really unwell. Mm. Um, there's arsenic in certain foods, mm. but, um, you know, in small amounts that we're consuming them, it really doesn't bother us. So my theory is it's the dose that's yeah. the poison. Um, and so I think the reality is though people always want to know, should I drink sh full sugar, soft drink or diet soft drink and I always fire back neither yeah just drink water <laughs> soda or I just yeah. drink soda water yeah. with lime juice yeah. with limes growing or if you must just a bit of cordial uh, just a little bit just yeah. to do the taste um you know same as uh, margarine or butter people just love to argue that one backwards and forwards I say well look it's fat do you think any of it's <laughs> that particularly good for you it's not a whole food it's mm. just an added fat yeah. If you want to waste your time arguing backwards and forwards, great, but I'm going to go and eat real food and um, see where that gets me. Mm. Um, so well, it gets you healthy. Yes. And it gets yeah. you full of nutrition. Yes. And the reality is if you just have a little bit of it, it's yeah. really, you know, yeah. um, if you don't have uh, bread with your butter, you'll be fine. <laughs> Not butter with your bread. Gotcha. Yeah. I said that the to a little slab. kid once and he looked at me. I said, you don't, you don't understand what I'm talking about, do you? He goes, nah. <laughs> oh, that is so true. Yeah. Eating butter like cheese. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is yummy, yeah. let's face yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Mm. So, it, sorry. No, I was just going to say, is there anything else that we haven't covered? Oh, we could sit here I all know. year. I know. I <laughs> know. Yeah, I, I think we've done the quite ov well. the, ov the obvious stuff, I think we've mm. probably. Yeah. Just keep it simple. People overcomplicate everything now. Um, just keep yeah. it simple. Eat well and, and look move. at the, look at the science rather than the and influencer. I, and I do understand the science can be conflicting, mm. um, but again, it goes back to we do know what healthy food is. Yeah. Um, and always remember, a lot of the nitpicky stuff. It's only a small percentage of your health. So yeah. whether you fast or you don't. Yeah. Um, it's only going to make a small, significant difference. Yeah. Um, 95% of the difference that you're going to make is going to be in the doing, you know, yeah. eating a nu nutritious food, moving your body, getting good sleep, not too much food. Um, you know, that's where the overwhelming majority of um, the outcome's going to come from. Mm. Uh, not just in all these little things that seem to mm. uh, grab the headlines, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah, just keep it simple. Nice. Wise words. Mm. And best of luck to you, Lana, as well at the World Triathlon Championships yeah. in September. Yeah. Look forward to hearing all about that. Yeah. I've got to get there first. <laughs> so I'm going to fall off my bike. Or... You will. <laughs> Don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> we love a quote here. So yeah. do you have a quote that you would share with us? Um, well, I could have share many. Several. Um, <laughs> but definitely I suppose it's uh, apt to the um, – Triathlon championships, the longest journey begins with a single step. Stop mm. thinking that it's too big a um, milestone or it's too big a um, to climb, a rock to climb, because in reality you've just got to start somewhere. Um, and, you know, I only started doing triathlon less than five years ago. I used to ride horses. Uh, and I, mm, you know, at some stage might have thought, well, gosh, this is really overwhelming doing an Ironman. But I just said, oh, great, I'm going <laughs> to do this um, and enjoy it. You mm. know, enjoy the process, enjoy the journey, not just where, you know, the end result. Yeah. Um, so I'm, hopefully I'll enjoy the, the Nice France, um, but I'm going to enjoy the training. You know, I enjoy on going in. out on the bike with friends and running with people and running in the bush and if you don't enjoy that, then why are you doing it? Yeah. Yes. But don't wait. Just start. Don't wait for the motivation because uh, it usually won't come. <laughs> That's true. I like the way that you say I sound that. really motivating. <laughs> no, it was because we were going to ask no, you that's about good... what is a message yeah. you think all women should hear once in their life. And yes. it is, isn't it? Yes. Don't wait. No, because um, I think, again, there's a lot of – um, avenues for the shiny happy people to go oh this just comes naturally to me and it's all amazing it's not the cold hard reality of life is it's hard mm. um, and you know you just need to keep trudging and uh, I think it, like I said before enjoy it it's not always enjoyable like I said it's not always fun to swim 3k in the pool because um, it's not really my favorite thing to do 
but there's an end result there and you just keep going until you and again it's an integrity thing once you start doing that your self-esteem picks up um and you know i believe that that that's the way to go nice you're very inspiring lana thank you (laughs) thank you now, if you have been affected by any of the topics discussed in this conversation, then we will leave some links below. Um, and if you enjoy listening to this episode, consider subscribing and putting notifications on. Mm-hmm. Thank you for coming on. Thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Good on you. And always remember. Every day. You are remarkable. Remarkable.